Wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that so good to be a, a part of that? Uh, and we really are a part of it as a church family. Uh, not only do we just witness it, but we also join our faith with theirs. Uh, and it's quite an amazing, significant moment. We're going to continue on with our service. And I am your preacher today. Good morning. I'm Kerry, if I haven't met you. <laughs> uh, and I just have a few thoughts to share uh, today on this very special Sunday uh, while our candidates are getting changed. And Pastor Brennan will hop up um, shortly to hand them certificates. Uh, but uh, I just have a few thoughts to share. So bear with me for the next few moments uh, while I... Uh, yeah, share with you. <laughs> uh, if you want to follow along, you've got some notes uh, in the YouVersion Bible app. Uh, and of course, the scriptures and notes are going to come up on the screen as well. I had the privilege, actually, of sitting with Erica uh, in the la last couple of weeks going through our civic water baptism booklet. For those who don't know, we have a booklet that we've produced uh, that helps people understand the significance uh, and the uh, symbolism of exactly what water baptisms means, kind of what Pastor J Jason was talking about in the tank. Uh, it's such a uh, meaningful moment, way more than infant baptism or, or, or being christened. But one scripture stood out to me when we were going through the booklet. You know those times, you might have read it a thousand times, but in that moment when I was talking with her, this scripture just, just jumped out at me, uh, talking about new life. It was Romans 6 verse 4. Paul writes, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Now, this is exactly what water baptisms represent. The old is gone and the new has come, and we crucify our old self so that now it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Uh, and that's exactly what Erica and Elijah declared today as they went through the baptism waters. We know that for any life, there must first be death, right? For our life, Jesus gave his own so that in his death, we may now have life. And, you know, we're stepping into spring. I know that the calendar has been, or that the weather has been a bit ahead of us. <laughs> um, but officially, as of this Friday, we're officially uh, into spring. And the flowers all around Toowoomba, what we're most known for, uh, are coming to life. If you get a chance to wander through Yukana Gardens, do yourself a favour, um, particularly the one right on the uh, right-hand side of the front entrance. Uh, it's a, like a little map of Australia, actually. Uh, it's quite beautiful. Uh, and it's starting to come to bloom now. I think they've actually entered it into a competition. Yeah, the, the, the gardens competition. Anyway, go and have a look. Um, it's amazing. Uh, but, you know, spring is literally springing all around us. But for all that life, there had to be death. The dead leaves had to fall. The dead buds had to be cut off. The dead branches had to be cut off. And the dead fruit had to fall. And this journey that we all take um, when we start following Jesus uh, is one of dying to ourselves. And we started that when we first accepted that gift of faith that the Father gave us. Our spirit became new and instantly the Holy Spirit moved in. We're now indwelt with the Holy Spirit. And we started this dying journey so that we could live for Christ. But when we go through the waters of baptism, that journey is done. We're not dying anymore. <laughs> We're actually died. We've actually died. Like RIP. <laughs> we have gone. The old self is nailed to that cross just like Jesus was. And it is dead, dead, dead. There is no reviving that thing. What were priorities before that moment are no longer priorities now. What were coping mechanisms then when, are no longer coping mechanisms now. What were mindsets for living? What were goals to achieve then? no longer exist now. The old self that was without Christ, that didn't want a bar of anything to do with God, that was selfish and suffocating under this power and penalty of sin is totally gone. And we live now fully in this newness of life that Christ has promised to us. And this new life is the one that we celebrate today, that we celebrate with Erica and with Elijah this new life that they have uh, demonstrated, an abundant life that is so much better than the one that we had before, a life with new priorities, new, uh, sorry, new goals, new identity, and new fruit. Jesus literally spent his life for us to have this new life. 
He voluntarily gave his life, just what Pastor Jess was talking about in communion, for the penalty of our, for our sin, uh, to make a way for us to have relationship with our Father. And we now have life because he lives. Who knows the old hymn? I love it. It's such a classic, right? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Just because he lives, I live. And so, of course, his heart for us is to be life livers. Life livers. He said in John 10, 10, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Jesus wants us to access absolutely everything that he bought for us on that cross of Calvary, leaving nothing out. After all, he is life and he wants us to enjoy and live this life, a life that is free from guilt and shame, a life that is at peace with God, full of purpose, bursting with hope, safe in his love, kept by his grace and ultimately has the guarantee of an even better life to come. That's the kind of life we're here to live, right? Basically, way more life than we could ever know what to do with. <laughs> but we do know what to do with it, right? If we look to his word and we look to his nature, we know exactly what to do with this gift of life that he has given us. Not only does he want us to be life livers, but he wants, to do, he wants us to do something else with this life. Life propagates life. Like from life comes life, right? Pastor Sue... What's the easiest and cheapest way to grow your succulents? By cuttings. That's exactly what you were going to say. I knew I was on the tip of your tongue. <laughs> Pastor Sue is like an avid plant person. She is like my plant idol. Um, I love home, home uh, indoor plants and um, Pastor Sue has just got an epic collection. Uh, and, uh, you know, the best and easiest, um, quickest, cheapest way to grow succulents is by you know, slicing a leaf off, uh, letting it stub on the end and then whacking it into soil and there you go. You have a new succulent. There you go, Gardening Lessons 101 from church this morning if you ever want to know. But life propagates life and this incredible life that we have in the now and in the future isn't one to keep to ourselves. Not only does Jesus want, to be, uh, want us to be life livers, he also wants us to be life givers. Life livers and life givers. And I think this hits on a couple of different levels. I think being a life giver, being able to, to, to extend this life that we have beyond ourselves. The first part is to share life. What does that look like? Shine, encourage people, love others, share hope and be kind. This is what it means to be a life giver. And in a faith context, uh, Paul says it like this in Romans 1, 11 to 12. For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and, more, and mine. Paul was basically saying, I really hope I get some time to come and, sh and, sh and share with you. Uh, because I know that just by um, being in my presence, I I'm hoping I can do some spiritual good to you. I'm hoping that I could bless you some way by, by just even just being near me. And that you would do the same for me as well. It's a mutual thing. And this is why we come together for church, right? This is what we do. We join together in our faith so that you can be encouraged by my faith and I can be encouraged by your faith. But in, in general life context, what does it mean to share life? Shine, Matthew 5, 16. Just do a, go about doing good. Just be a decent person and do good works. Encourage people, Ephesians 4, 29. Just encourage, give, give compliments, um, lift people up. There's too many people trying to pull people down. Let's just be about exhorting people. Love others, 1 Peter 4, 8. Love covers so much. Be optimistic, Romans 15, 13. Share some hope. Like what does the world need most today? Love, but also hope. And be kind, Proverbs 12, 25. Just share some kindness in your words today. We don't know what's going on in people's lives. Just be kind. Just season your words with kindness. This is what it means to share life. 
People ought to feel better about themselves and about life simply by being in your presence, just by hanging around you for any amount of time because life propagates life. We get to share this life. Not only do we share life to be a life giver, but we also spend our life. To be a life giver means to share it, but also to spend it in service to God and to others. You know, Jesus literally gave his life for this, right? He fulfilled the word of God and the will of God by serving humanity and going to the cross. Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man didn't come to uh, expecting to be served by everyone, but to serve everyone and to give his life as a ransom price for the salvation of many. And Paul did exactly what he tells us to do. He imitated Christ and he then started to give his life to God and to man in the service of them. And he writes to the church in Philippi uh, in uh, Philippians 2.17. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. Now, some think Paul's talking about his martyrdom here, being killed for his faith, but the verb of that pouring out is actually present tense, uh, which to others actually indicates he's meaning his sacrificial ministry, what he's actually giving of his life to, to God and to others in the service of God and for others. So what I take from this and many other verses where Paul talks about giving his life is that he really viewed his whole life as a sacrifice and an offering, something given voluntarily, sacrificially, and completely in the service of God and others. This is what it means to be a life giver, to spend your life, to put everything we've got, absolutely everything, leaving nothing in the tank, literally, (laughs) nothing behind to serve God and to serve others. Remember, the old man is dead. The old man that only wanted um, our uh, agenda, that only wanted things our way. <laughs> the, the, the man that wanted, uh, didn't want anything to do with God and didn't want anything to do with serving others. That old man is done. Nailed to the cross, flushed down the tank. Now we're here to spend our lives for God, to advance his cause and to love and serve people. Life livers and life givers. They're my simple thoughts this morning. So let's just go out and do it. <laughs> let's go out and be a life liver to, to, to enjoy this incredible life that Jesus has given us so that other people would benefit from that. Live it to the max, people, but then give it. Be a life giver. Share this life with everyone around us, not just within the four walls of this church, but beyond, just by being decent, loving, encouraging, kind, optimistic people. And then let's spend every moment of this life in service to God and service to others. Life livers and life givers. Amen. They were my short thoughts this morning. <laughs> I hope that you, uh, you picked up something from that. Um, uh, I think uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great thought, life livers, life givers, something that was really encouraging and challenging to me. Uh, I am excited to invite our senior pastor, Pastor Brendan, now uh, up to share. Uh, he's going to uh, bless our candidates with their certificates. So, Pastor Brendan, why don't you come and join us? And I'll also invite Elijah and Erica to come up as well.